Hi, I'm Dr. Frank Rassler, and this interesting video was designed to provide a brief explanation of our emergency room treatment for someone having a stroke of their brain. In just a moment, I'm going to show you an incredibly rare example where we can actually see a patient having a stroke and watch it getting worse every few minutes. And this is to help you understand why everything we do to treat a stroke needs to happen very quickly. Many times we can potentially improve a patient's outcome with a rapid response. We're also going to talk briefly about what a stroke is, and usually it's a blood clot that acts like a small plug. It blocks the flow of blood to a section of the brain. Now, there are treatments we use to minimize permanent brain damage in some patients or to prevent a stroke from becoming more severe. Not all strokes can be treated in this way, however. For those that can be treated, the earlier treatment begins, the better your recovery. We use a clot buster drug. It helps dissolve the clot. Or another treatment method is to actually go into the blood vessel and remove the clot, but time is critical because every minute that section of your brain is lacking blood flow, more and more brain cells are dying, and that means the stroke is getting worse. Now there are many other videos you can watch about what a stroke is. Instead, I want to keep this video brief and just focus on the message that rapid treatment, most importantly, begins with you or your family or friends, first by recognizing that a stroke might be happening, and then secondly, getting you to an emergency room as soon as possible. If a stroke happens, don't waste time going to an urgent care clinic or calling your family doctor. Call for an ambulance. Call 911. They will be able to rapidly assess if your symptoms appear to be a stroke and then get you to the nearest emergency room that is best able to take care of a stroke. Now I'll quickly mention that any of these sudden changes could be a stroke. A sudden change in your balance or your eyesight, drooping on just one side of your face or weakness on just one side of your body in an arm or a leg, difficulty with thinking, speaking, or slurring of your speech. And the key word here is sudden. It usually happens abruptly. It's noticeable. And it's also very important for you to remember the time that your symptoms first begin. That time that your stroke begins is a critical piece of information once you get to the hospital. Now, let me show you this rare example of an actual stroke. And in this case, we see the stroke symptoms begin gradually and get worse every few minutes. Now, I met this patient when an ambulance brought him to my emergency room. He was a healthy, intelligent 60-year-old who had been playing in a local chess competition, and he brought his handwritten record of the game. In competition chess, after each move that you and your opponent make, you write it down on the official record. At the beginning of the game, each move takes only a few seconds, but as the game progresses, more time and thought is required, and each move takes a couple of minutes. As you can see by the change in his handwriting ability, his stroke began at approximately the 25th move and then progressively worsened as we go down the page and on to the next column. He told me he had no difficulty thinking of his chess strategy, but thought his deteriorating handwriting was just because he was getting tired. He had no idea he was having a stroke. At this stage of the chess game, each move probably took about two or three minutes. So multiplying this by two opponents over the next 30 chess moves shows us the first hour of his stroke. And when he eventually realized something was clearly wrong and got up from his chair to go to the hospital, he also noticed his leg on the same side as his hand was also not working right. Now, why this record is so rare is that during a stroke, no one is just sitting there giving a handwriting sample every few minutes. It allows us to see an increasing number of brain cells being damaged every few minutes during his stroke. When blood can't get past the blood clot, the cells in the section of his brain that control his hand and leg were not getting the oxygen and nutrients they needed to survive. Brain cells can't last long without their supply of blood, and each minute of the stroke 
many, many thousands of brain cells are dying. Think of a stroke like a fire in your brain. The longer it burns, the more damage occurs. <laughs> but here's the good news. If we act fast, we can put the fire out. The quicker we can remove the blood clot and return blood flow, then we can save some of the brain cells that are injured but have not yet died. And this example clearly demonstrates how the clot buster drugs or the clot removal methods can sometimes prevent a small stroke from turning into a much bigger stroke. It shows why you want to get to the emergency room as quickly as possible. And by that I mean to try to get there within one to two hours of the onset. As you've seen, it could make the difference between recovering from a mild stroke or spending the rest of your life in a wheelchair or being unable to think or talk normally. Now, to help explain stroke in a different way, I want to show you a very simple diagram of what happens inside your brain. Most strokes are caused by a blood clot that blocks the blood vessels supplying blood to a small section of the brain. The blood carries the oxygen and sugar that the brain needs to survive. So without blood, brain cells quickly start to die, shown here in bright red as the stroke zone. But surrounding the stroke zone, there's an area called the ischemic zone, which means reduced blood flow, shown here in pink. These brain cells are injured, but still have some partial blood flow. However, they will soon die and result in an increased size of the stroke zone unless we can remove the blood clot. <laughs> and once again, the key here is quickly remove the blood clot. Then those brain cells may recover. And this is where we can make the difference between a small stroke or a big one. Now, four to five decades ago, when we first started using CAT scans to help understand a stroke, there was no treatment available to reverse the stroke's damage. In fact, back then, we thought a stroke was like a lightning bolt. It happened suddenly, and instantly the damage was done. All that a doctor could do in those days was to help with long-term rehabilitation. Now, we know that stroke is not a single lightning bolt event. It begins suddenly, but then continues and gets worse. Have you ever wondered, what would you do if someone you loved were to have a stroke? How would you react? How would you know it was happening? Maybe this thought has never crossed your mind before and you don't know what you would do, but being able to recognize a stroke and act on it correctly can mean the difference between recovery or a lifelong disability. So here's a simple word tool anyone can use to understand if a stroke is happening. It's called be fast. And the letters stand for different stroke signs that you can easily check for either on yourself or the person you're with. B is for balance. Is there difficulty in walking or standing? E is for your eyes. Is there a sudden decrease or loss of vision? F for your face. Is the face drooping or feeling numb on just one side? Try to smile. Does the smile look uneven? A, it's for your arms, but also for your legs. Does the arm or leg feel weak or numb on just one side of the body? Ask the person to lift both arms, and does one arm drift or fall down? Is there difficulty using just one hand? And S is for speech. Is there a sudden change in the ability to speak or slurred speech? Ask the person to say a simple sentence. Are they difficult to understand? And T, this means time. Rapid recognition that a stroke might be happening and rapidly calling for an ambulance. The ambulance will also get you immediately into the ER without waiting in line or signing papers. They know that every minute counts and take special note of the time when the stroke symptoms begin. The emergency room doctor needs this information. And they will also need a list of the medications and medical conditions to properly treat the patient.
So you should always carry a copy of this information with you, including medication doses. Carry it with you in your wallet or on your purse or your cell phone. So once again, my critical message is don't delay getting help. But unfortunately, when a stroke happens, many people do wait and this delay can cause more brain damage and the stroke effects become permanent. And why do people often delay or be wait before getting help? Well, sometimes the symptoms just seem mild at the beginning and you ignore them or hope it's going to get better on its own. You may feel fine in the early stages of a stroke. You might not even feel sick and usually there's no pain. Sometimes a stroke patient will call their family first or call their family doctor before calling an ambulance. Or maybe they just want to take care of a few things before going to the hospital. This is clearly a mistake. And the main reason for doing this video is to help explain to patients and their family or friends why your first action should be to call for an ambulance. Because as I've shown you, every minute counts. Now, quick review. The critical message is rapid stroke treatment begins with you. Recognize that a stroke might be happening. Usually it's a sudden onset. One side of the body. Remember, be fast. Balance. Eyes. Weakness. Face, arm, or leg on one side of the body. Speech. And time. Call 911 immediately. Don't wait. And remember the time your stroke symptoms start to tell the ER doctor. And finally, you should also know that many strokes are preventable. That's right, you can prevent a stroke from ever happening with simple, healthy lifestyle improvements. Exercise, healthy eating, weight reduction, smoking, control of your blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, yes, all those things you already know about health will reduce your risk of having a future stroke and help keep you out of the emergency room. Thank you.